Time for another one of our signature voter panels. This time, a group that political pundits say could decide this election, suburban college-educated women. They are part of a book club that started in 2004, and up until this week, they have never discussed politics. That changed when we sat down in one of their New Jersey homes, and we went there. Is it true that you never talk about politics? We talk about issues more than we talk about politics. How do you avoid talking about politics in this day and age? I've known Jean for years. We've talked about everything under the sun, but never politics, because um, I was afraid that I wouldn't like her politics, and I did not want to like anything about Jean. It's mutual. The feeling's mutual. Okay, well, I'm scared to introduce these <laughs> next questions now. I mean, I do this with a lot of trepidation. Do you feel comfortable telling me which of you, by a show of hands, would identify yourselves today as Democrats? Which of you today, show of hands, would identify as Republican? I mean, you guys are half and half, and that's so fascinating. Which of you um, today feels very motivated about the midterms, right, show of hands. How are you feeling? Just fatigued, I think. <laughs> fatigued from the whole thing, but. How many people are feeling fatigued? <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, go ahead. I just want to get to the election and then, you know, hopefully everybody can come to some type of civil reasoning and managing what should be managed in this country. That cooler heads will prevail and that civility will return. I like your optimism. <laughs> I, mean, I really do, I really do. I think that a lot of people are hoping for that. How are you feeling, Denise? I have to go by what my moral compass says. And if I were to have a word cloud, like form up of my head, it would have the words civility, moral compass, and choice. I hope that the rest of the country you know, follows back to that, that point of civility. This year I will be voting straight down the Democratic line. My speech bubble would say, words matter. Um, and the words that are out there every day um, are just eating at me. And the only way for me to fight that little me um, right now is, is to vote against what he stands for or who's standing behind him. I just have a really strong feeling about women right now, and I think it's time for us to really rise up. Wouldn't it be great to have more women in politics? I'm all about the women. <laughs> hey, Cindy, how are you feeling? What are you voting on this time? I am voting on jobs, number one. And do you feel that the job situation here is good or bad? Much better, much better. The more jobs, the, the, the better people feel, the more money, disposable income, keeps the economy go going. I think there's nothing negative about that. I do believe that jobs are important. Um, I have experienced job loss on myself in the past five years, um, which has also opened my eyes to our health care situation. That if you lose your job, you lose your health care. If you lose your job, you lose your health care. And that happened to you? That happened to me. We were promised that we were able to keep our health care if Obamacare went through and our premiums doubled. We have to discuss the issues. We have to discuss what's happening to the, with the uh, opioid crisis. We have to discuss what's happening with in, uh, medical insurance. Those things aren't being talked about. And when they do, they get drowned out by, you know, some new, you know, breaking news. How many people feel the opioid crisis in their own lives and are worried about it here in New Jersey? All of you have felt the opioid crisis here. I don't think there is a person who is, is unaffected, who doesn't know a, a family member, a friend, a coworker, a relative of your family friend or coworker. The Trump administration has talked a lot about the opioid crisis and has talked about making that a priority. Do you feel any progress? I think education and awareness, that's the only, those are the only areas that I've noticed an improvement in. I mean, it's an epidemic. Come on, people, we gotta, we gotta do something. We've gotta get somebody in there and, and that's going to move us in the right direction. And we can't keep doing this and expect 14,000 people coming up through Mexico to and where be are you getting that number of 14,000? Yeah, no, 14,000. <laughs> 
seven or seven. It started at seven, but now they're five hundred. It's now down to thirty five hundred. Let's say seven. Coming up through Mexico. How can we pay for their education, their health care, when all of us on this side are paying more and more and more? And if somebody loses their job here, shouldn't we be taken care of first? So you're worried about immigration? Only coming in the illegal way. Not the legal way. Come in the legal way and you are more than welcome. I mean, it is legal to seek asylum. Well, I hope Trump changes that. You don't want any asylum seekers? No. Immigration is, is an issue. Um, it's the basis of our country and, and how we were formed. Um, and building a wall is not how to fix it. How many of a show of hands feel that the president is trying to gin up fear or gin up this story before the midterms? A fear motivates people. And I think that is the basis for anything that he does. Do you feel there's a real crisis? In what? At the border. At do the border, do I think there's a crisis? Is there an issue? Yes. Is there a crisis? No. I also agree that seeking asylum is not illegal. It is not coming to the country illegally. Um, I think that human rights are a very important thing. I think that our country has been very much built on the fact of human rights. I, I feel like we should take pride in the way our country was formed and how we welcomed immigrants. If we're committed to having immigrants, then we have to have the support for them as well, I believe. Okay, I'm happy to report they're still friends. But that's to me what's most interesting about this, but go ahead. Okay, they did need wine. Immediate, this was at two in the afternoon, and they did immediately need to go have some wine because they have studiously avoided talking about this because you can see how quickly the fissures are exposed and what could be, you know, some hard feelings, but they have avoided it for all of those years. You need to be able to have book clubs with people you don't agree about politics with. Yeah, for sure.